So Jim Everton is standing alongside Uriah Faber at the UFC Performance Institute ahead of Quintet 3, which goes down on Friday night. Uh, Uriah, you just heard you're going to be grappling uh, Sakuraba. Dream grappling match for you. What's kind of your reaction to that and how much are you looking forward to this? Oh man, I'm just so excited. I, I think, you know, I've been known throughout my career for showing up at gyms and trying to go with the best guy. And uh, Sakuraba is somebody that I looked up to for a long time. He was, you know, one of the guys that motivated me when I first started in this sport. So being able to have the super fight on this this level, you know, with this many eyes on it is going to be awesome. Man. I'm, I'm excited. How do you kind of get involved in this? Like, um, but who approached who, and like, how did this all come about? So, uh, Ant, he, he's he's in charge of the Fight Pass, UFC Fight Pass. He's tried to put together a lot of different grappling matches for me, but I've got a busy schedule and timing hasn't worked out. And when he called with this opportunity, I, I just couldn't pass it up. It was too interesting, too much fun, and uh, you know, just a good opportunity, opportunity all the way around. So um, jumped at it and, and cleared the calendar and said, "All right, let's do this and, and make it go at it." I mean, how much uh, how much have you dedicated yourself to this event? Like, how much have you more have you been training, or has it just been business as usual in the gym? It's kind of been business as usual, to be honest. Uh, just because my choice way of working out is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, anyways. I do it three days a week with, with my team and, and, and the classes that we have at my gym. And so I've just had to step that up a little bit and just be a little bit more on top of uh, checking out opponents and stuff like that. But um, for me, this is a very fun thing. It's not like I'm um, changing my whole lifestyle for it. It's, it's just continuing to live the, live, the, live the life that I do and, and then have a, a nice shiny apple at the end of it with a great competition. For sure. It, are things like this kind of, uh, I guess, quelling that desire to get back and compete, get back in the cage, or, or is there still kind of that fire burning that you need to kind of fight sometimes? Um, I still have that on occasion. You know, you don't lose that. Uh, in a, I, I would never rule anything out, obviously. Um, we'll see how this competition goes. You know, I'm going to see how, how I enjoy uh, getting in there and scrapping. Uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously uh, I'm still, you know, young and, and, and in a mixed martial arts world where guys are fighting into their late 40s. Uh, I could do it for another decade if I want, but, um, you know, I, right now I'm excited to do a grappling match only and we'll go from there. I mean, the, this is one of the biggest fight weeks, not only of the year, but probably all time for the UFC as well. Was it kind of like being back in the mix of fight week, Connor versus Khabib on Saturday as well? Is that, I don't know, does it kind of get the juices going again maybe, just a little bit? Yeah, it's always it's always fun. Every time I come to the UFC PI, which happens on occasion because my team and, and, you know, obligations and whatnot, um, it gets me excited. I, I love the environment, I love the sport, that's why I, I chose it as a career. And um, it, it definitely, you know, gets an itch, but, um, you know, these big fights, I'm, I'm all about the big fights. The Conor Khabib fight, uh, what an awesome you know, display of, of two serious, serious athletes and two different styles. So I'm, I'm hooked in and, and excited to see that as well. Uh, of course, got to ask you, man, prediction for this fight, Conor Khabib on Saturday. How, how do you see it playing out? Who, who do you think gets their hand raised? Man, I, you know, it, it'd be easy to stay on the fence in this one because it can go so many different ways. Yeah. But uh, if I had to choose someone, assuming that, uh, you know, Connor's done his homework over the last two years since he fought last, uh, I think he's going to have an edge just because every fight starts standing, every fight, you know, every round starts in, starts standing, if there's a lull in action, they start standing, and I think he's got a big advantage when it comes to the stand-up, and, and Khabib is, is kind of an invincible guy, like he, he has, as he should, has a lot of confidence, he has a, a, a you know, a, an intensity that, that pushes, and, and Connor has that same kind of pressure in a different way, um, but, you know, the danger, I think, is more on the Connor side, I think he's got the more dangerous tools. Prediction, round, finish? I, I've got to say probably the, I don't know, probably probably the third round, KO. Good stuff. Like, like you were saying a minute ago, you're here at the Performance Institute quite a bit because you've got so many guys at Team Alpha Male who, who you will be representing on Friday, uh, competing. We're just off camera, we were talking about Sage Northcutt, his kind of situation with the UFC, all the things going on in the media with Paul Logan at the moment, or Logan Paul. Like, what, what do you think um, is going to happen in that situation? Do you think this could actually be a fight that actually materializes? You know, you never know how much Logan Paul really believes in himself. If he believes in himself, like I feel like he does, you know, 
Sage responded to him talking about the UFC. Logan responded back. Logan has a wrestling background, uh, and it could it, it could be something that happens for sure. I mean, Sage is able to do what he wants at this point, um, unless the UFC. I don't think the UFC has even given him an offer, from what I understand from his dad. So, uh, like a negotiation hasn't happened at all. But uh, he has the he has the right and the freedom to do what he wants. And that if, if he wants that fight, and Logan wants that fight. That's that's as as old as it gets that schoolyard recess stuff like meet me at the at the at the football stadium and let's uh you know at the park after school and, and let's fight i think a lot of people want to see that i mean like that that's slightly odd the fact that sage hasn't had those discussions yet would you have expected like the ufc to reach out to him and start that because i mean he's he's quite a big star like in the grand scheme of things in the ufc yeah you know the 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 leadership has changed at the ufc in some ways mm -hmm. um they have different policies than they used to. I don't know how they stack up. In my opinion, I would love to see Sage continue on this journey with the UFC at 21 years old. I think he can be a world champion. The way he learns, his physical gifts, the homework that he's done by being one of the top fighters uh, in his own discipline his entire life, winning over 40 world championships in, in traditional martial arts. Um, the UFC would be stupid not to, to re-sign him and pay him some good money. Whether they'll do that uh, is yet to be heard, and I hope that they do, and I'm going to push for them to do it, and I'm going to push Sage to hopefully go with the UFC. But, um, you know, when he talks, Sage isn't like a, he, you know, he's, he's he's also a businessman. He really is. And uh, he wants to get paid fair value, and, and we'll see if, if that can mesh out. Just lastly, another teammate, uh, Chad Mendez. Like, well, what's going on there? It's on Chad. We're talking about how he wants to fight again before the end of the year, and how he wants to get back in there and put himself in contention for his brother. How do you think he does that? He just needs to do what he's doing. You know, he, he came off of a, of a fight with Connor where he was basically manhandling you know, one of the one of the greatest. And uh, I mean, really an easy fight up until the very end when he was fatigued. And uh, then he comes back and he knocks off a contender in, in, in awesome style. And, and he's just been having fun. And Chad's one of the happiest guys you'll meet, and he's in a really good spot in his life with his wife and his, and his hunting business, Fins and Feathers, which we just went on an awesome trip to Texas together. Um, so for me, a happy Chad is a dangerous Chad. You know, that, that's, that, that's the way I see it. And he can be a world champ you know, within two fights. Great stuff, and obviously just lastly, Quintet 3, Friday night. You were saying earlier how it's, it's fun to be back on like, the competitive side of things, but how seriously are you taking this? Is it a case of when you step on the mats, you, you seriously do want to win this? Oh yeah, it's all business. I mean, look, I, I'm an opportun opportunity guy. I have a chance to take out somebody that, that I have so much respect for, and and I want to get a submission, and that's, that's what I want to do, and I want to move on. And, make a statement I want to put the, the BJJ world on watch and say hey guys uh, you know third MMA com or a third combat career in the making you know this is this is again my second match that I've done uh, the last one was with Paulo Miao who's won open divisions and, and is one of the you know most decorated guys in the sport who we went to six overtimes and he won by a time decision um, you know us mixed martial artists no Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and love it, and uh, so I'm, I'm looking to prove that. Great stuff, I can see the fire in your eyes. It's Quintet 3 on Friday night. You're right, thanks for your time and best of luck in Sakurada. My pleasure. Yeah.